This is the roundup video for January 2020. Uh, it's going to be slightly different from the previous ones because it com it's comprised of um, a couple of larger pieces of development which I've already done videos on. So I'm just going to run through the documentation website, uh, speak about these larger modules and then show you some of the smaller changes that we actually made. So at the start of January we actually introduced our vehicle sales module. Um, there are four separate videos on this, so I'll just run through some of the features we added. We added a new role center uh, for vehicle sales administrators. Um, we added the ability to produce vehicle sales invoices and purchase invoices. Um, and this also takes into account the VAT margin scheme as well. Um, we've created a stock report so you can analyze um, how many days in stock the vehicles have been. Uh, a reservations feature. Uh, so you can actually reserve vehicles. Again, there is a video on the reservations. Um, it's all done within the item card and you can set things such as um, whether it includes a part exchange, etc. Um, and then the really clever part is we introduced a internal um, preparation job sheets. So if you've purchased a vehicle and you want to produce um, a job sheet for some internal preparation work, then the actual cost and the items and the labor within that job sheet will be applied to the balance sheet as an asset. So it'll actually increase the standing value um, of the vehicle that's for sale. And then when you sell the vehicle, it's at that point it will um, account for the cost. I'm gonna go, I'll run through the online booking stuff uh, shortly, but uh, towards the end of the month, um, we added the production year and registration date to the fact box. So if you take a look at the fact box here, um, you can now see production year, uh, registration date and production year. Now the production year is um, more often than not in the same year as the registration date, but not always, which is why we have both on here for you. Uh, again, there is there is a quite a lengthy video on this new feature for the comments extended, um, which will be available um, on in the description of this video. But I'll just very quickly show you what we've done. We made it so that the comments have unlimited space now. So when you add a comment, you must select type code. You can open the comment up and type away. Uh, press tab and it will close the comments for you. But we've also added the facility to actually print the comments as well. So if we just go ahead and just print uh, an invoice, I'll just add a line actually, just one second. So what you can see here are the labor lines which we've just added. Now at the bottom of the document, we've also got advisories and we have technician comments as well. So essentially you can create your own type of code. Uh, so if I go to create a new one and I can decide whether I want it printing, whether I want it hiding from technicians, the print sequence, and whether I want it printed at the top or the bottom of the document. So it's a really good feature. I advise that you watch the extended video. Uh, we added service package filtering to job sheets as well. So for those that are using the service package feature, which is an extremely powerful uh, function within Garage Hive, it will now pre-filter depending on which vehicle is on the job sheet. So for example, if I go to look up service package, it's only showing me the service packages that apply to this vehicle. And in this case, it's because it's a BMW and it's a diesel. And the interim service is because it's a diesel. It also has production range uh, filters and um, engine capacity filters as well if you want to. Again, there is a much longer video um, on this which I advise that you watch. Uh, we added the customer arrival time um, and arrival date fields to job sheets. So as you'll all be aware, in the fact box, you've always had the booking date and time. There isn't one on here because it's not actually booked in on the schedule, but this can actually be different from the arrival date and time. Um, so if you've got a job which is booked in um, on the schedule on let's say 10 a.m. on a Tuesday but the customer's actually dropping the car off at either 9 a.m. on the Tuesday or even the day before well there are fields now within the job sheet where you can actually state um, an arrival time and an arrival date um, if it's different from the actual book time um, within the schedule. Uh, we added a mobile phone number, phone number and email address to uh, job sheets so I'll just show you this now this is really for working with external systems. So if you want to import this data for some reason into a, an external system from job sheets now, you can actually add the customer contact details. So you have to choose columns. 
and you'll see that you have customer uh, mobile phone number, phone number and email address now available on job sheets as well. We've updated the Xero API. So for anybody who uses Xero, uh, any of our current users that are using Xero, the odds are that you're using um, the API for OAuth 1.0. We've actually upgraded to 2.0 now. So if you decide that you um, want to upgrade the way the Xero API works, then we can now accommodate OAuth 2. And for anybody new coming across to Garage Hive, this means that the API will work um, if you have just decided to start using Xero as well. Uh, and one more change that we made was we added a safety inspection. Uh, so um, this is more uh, to do with our Irish customers. Um, you don't necessarily set an MOT reminder, but what you can do now from the vehicle cards is set a safety check date. So it's quite generic, um, but if it's not an MOT or a service, but you have a, a separate check, then you can now set the date on the vehicle card. And this is also available to set reminders to send customers text messages and emails as well. So moving on to the online booking, we've made a lot of improvements. So the, the online booking went live at the end of last year and we've been continuously improving it and we plan on uh, carrying on doing that. Um, so some of the things that we've added, we added the ability to, say, to disable the expected time of a booking. Um, so I'll just show you what this looks like. So previously uh, you would have had the expected time. Uh, so you can give the customer sort of an expected wait time. Uh, well, we've added the ability to disable that now. Uh, we've added the ability to uh, add your Google Analytics ID to the embed. So if you want to bring through some of the data into Google Analytics, then you can now as well. Um, we added the price from option to service packages. So I'll just show you this. So on each version line, you can set it. So instead of giving the customer the price, it will say price from 170 is a nice feature so you just tick this box here. Uh, the make filters to service package versions right okay so we actually change the way that you set filters up for service packages as well which is also the same for online booking. Again there is a much longer video on how to do this but essentially we've changed we've added an option called conditions. So if I select conditions this is where I can add make filters and fuel type filters and it actually create exclusions as well. So if I wanted to create a service package for all BMWs except diesels, then I could just create this as it is and now select exclude. Um, so this service package now, this version now applies to all BMW, all BMWs except diesels. So again, really cool feature for setting up service packages. Again, there is a longer video on this. Uh, we added the ability to hide prices online so we've got this slider here. So if you don't want to show any prices at all, then you can just uh, enable this. And we also added a feature to create service package as, as an addition only. So previously, if you had a service package available online, um, let's use wheel alignment as an example. Oh, let's use brake fluid. So brake fluid is a, is a service package that you want to offer in addition to services only. Well, now you can actually create it so it is additional only. So it will actually not let the customer book a brake fluid change unless it's being booked with some sort of service, full service. And last but not least, we've added the ability to copy service packages that include conditions. So when you are setting up service packages, um, you can decide to copy one of these service package versions and it will add, it will copy the, uh, not only all of this information on here, it will also copy the conditions and the version lines as well for you just to modify. So that's the roundup. I know it was a bit shorter, but it's mainly because of the size of some of the features that we've made. They've actually got their own videos, which I advise you watch if you want to go into more detail. Um, look forward to your feedback. If you've got any questions, then let me know. Thank you.